Now let's see the peculiar problems of when this lift is achieved by putting a strut top hat spacer such as this blue garage lift kit. Normal truck, ride height, normal baseline. Install a strut top hat. It's going to push the wheels down into a position of droop. So you get a new baseline ride height, which is lower and that's how the body is lifted. Here, I urge you to remember two things. First, instead of understanding this as a body going up for the lift, the lift visualize that lift is achieved by strut spacers by pushing the wheel down to some droop and holding it there by force all the time, even at ride height. So there is a downward force on your lower assembly all the time. Second, the arms, the upper and lower control arms and the ball joints and the axles, everything operate at an angle, even at ride height always. Which brings us to myth number three, that if you put a one inch spacer, you'll get a one inch lift. No, this effect is multiplied actually as I explained in the last video, actually the lower control arms were flat and they were making almost a parallel angle to the ground. But so the GC was only this much. But once the strut was pushed down by the spacer, this joint went down along with the wheel. And so the lower control arm actually went up at an angle. And so that increases the clearance. So the control arm is actually at a different angle than the original and that contributes to the additional ground clearance. The strut pushes the ball joint down, wheel moves down, but the lower arm pivots about this point on the body. So by lever principle, the lift achieved is multiplied in proportion to this ratio of the relative distance. This is called the motion ratio. So even a small spacer can lift the vehicle proportionally to a much greater height.